press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hello dear children. Well, I am here with you with the second supplementary of your 9th English. Children, before going to the lesson, let us talk about happiness. See, happiness, no? It is very, very important in life. And you all know, in the first lesson, you have come to know that happiness, it is the result of good conduct. Conduct means behavior. When we behave in a good manner, then the happiness, it will come to us as a result. Everyone, everyone in this world desire to be very happy. You also desire to be very happy. I also desire to be very happy. Happiness, it cures all the diseases. Happiness, it is a cure. Cure means it is a medicine. When a person will be very happy, then he will be very healthy. Yes, tell me when a person will be happy. When? When means when a person is satisfied, when a person is contented in his life, then only he will be happy. Then only he will be happy in his life. So, Gautam Buddha has told, desire is the root cause of sorrow. When we will be sorrowful, when we desire for so much. So, happiness, happiness, it comes when we will be contented, trupti, when we will be satisfied what we have in our life. And happiness will come when we do our duty, when we fulfill our responsibility, then only we will feel happy in life. Satisfaction and contentment leads to the happiness. See, Lord Krishna has told, we have to do our work and we have to leave the fruit of action to the God. Whatever the God has assigned the work, we have to do. We have to fulfill our duty. We have to fulfill our responsibility, responsibility in our life. We have to do the work and the remaining, the fruit of the action, that, uh, uh, what we can say. Kelas uh, Prati Falana, Devra Gibit Bidvekonta. Who has told? Lord Krishna has told. So here also is a lesson. It tells us about one king who is very foolish, who doesn't want to do the work and who doesn't have satisfaction and contentment in his life and who is lying on the bed telling like that, I am not feeling well. I am at the death's door. I am at the door of the death. I can't do any work. In that way he is telling. But the truth is, the king, he doesn't have any disease. The truth is, he doesn't want to do any work. And he was being bored to the death. And at last, he was taught a nice lesson. So, at last he comes to know the very most important thing in life. What is most important? how a person should be. Happiness will come to a person when, when it comes, how it comes. As I have already told you, if we want to be very happy, how we should be? We should be satisfied, we should be contented and we should fulfill our duty and responsibility to the fullest. Then only we will be happy in our life. So the lesson name is the happy cue. Observe the word here, cure. See, cure means it acts as both as noun. Cure, it acts both as noun and the verb. As I have already told you, noun means it is a naming word. Okay. Verb means it is an action word. Here, cure means we can take as medicine. Okay. Cure means medicine. When it is used as a noun, it is the meaning of the word cure is medicine. When it is used as a verb, so it cures this medicine, cures that disease. There, the word cure is used as a verb. Uh, is there any cure for the disease? Is there any cure for the disease? There. The word cure, it is used as a noun. Yes, 
this disease cures early cures where it is used as a verb so in this way cure it acts as both noun and verb okay so the happy cure the present lesson it is written by rose dots this uh, lesson it is retold by uh, an author rose dots okay i will read the lesson you just follow okay the happy cure retold by rose dots a foolish king lay dying at least that's what he said yes he said he was at death's door but the truth of the matter was this the king was suffering from having nothing to do he was being bored to death of course the king would not admit this he groaned and moaned and complained of sharp straps in every muscle and sticking pains in every bone in his body physicians and surgeons came from far and wide they looked down the king's throat they tapped his chest and they felt his pulse they hemmed hawed and stroked their beards but they could find nothing wrong physicians and surgeons are dolts cried the king aren't there any plain ordinary doctors in the kingdom the plain ordinary doctors came from hither and yon they felt the king's pulse tapped his chest and looked down his throat they hawed and hemmed took off their spectacles put them on again but even they could find nothing wrong plain ordinary doctors are idiots cried the king in rage the next one who examines me and finds nothing wrong will have his ears cut off and nose shortened this did not stop the coming of the doctors and the surgeons and the physicians the king kept sending messengers and uh, courtiers to bring them in the people were in despair such an epidemic of heads without ears and faces with short and noses was never seen finally a simple old man came to see the king the exhausted prime minister brought her into the royal bed chamber the simple old man peered into the king's face for a long time then she said your majesty you are suffering from a strange and rare disease so rare and strange that no name exists for it did i knew it cried the king in glee i kept telling all of them the fools that i am a sick man a very sick man said the old man the king leaned back among his silken pillows and closed his eyes uh, and wrinkled his brow as if he were in pain and is there no cure for me he asked who oh, yes, is your majesty you need sleep but one night in the shirt of a happy man and you will be cured instantly said the simple old man so dear children let us stop here i will go through the explanation as i have already told you the happy cure this lesson it is retold by rose drops the lesson it tells us about one king not only king he is he is a foolish king because he was escaping from his work he doesn't want to do any work simply what he was doing he was lying on the bed telling like that i am not feeling well i am at the door of the death i can't do any work and he was lying on the bed at the end of the lesson he was thought a nice lesson how one should be in the life so this is what the lesson the lesson name is the happy cure cure means it's a medicine so happiness it will be a medicine for all the diseases a person will be happy in his life only he will be happy when he will be happy when he will be satisfied contented and when he fulfills his duty and responsibilities to the fullest then only he will be happy happy in the life okay now let's move on to the lesson look at the lesson a foolish king lay dying 
at least that's what he said yes he said he was at but that's no but the truth of the matter was this the king was suffering from having nothing to do he was being bored to death so observe the very first line of the lesson what it is a foolish king so a foolish king so here king is a noun is it so king it is a noun it is a common noun because king it is a name given in common if i say akbar it is a proper noun akbar is a king king is a common noun king how is he how is he which word it is describing here foolish a word which describes noun and pronoun the subject in a sentence that will be an example for adjective i have told you i am just revising you in between the lesson whenever the grammar points come i will just uh, what uh, i will revise you okay it should be a uh, drilled uh, what a uh, practice work for you a foolish king otherwise i will uh, write here king was foolish or king is foolish okay so here also king is a noun foolish is a adjective okay so a foolish king foolish means very very what we can say uh, in kannada we say murkha foolish so how foolish he was very fool right so the lesson it begins with describing the king what it describes king he is not only a king he is a foolish king and what he was doing he lay dying so in kannada we say saita bididane lay means to keep or to lie okay so what he was doing he was dying at he uh, he was not died he was telling like that i am at the death door he was at dying saita idane at he is not died okay at least that's what he said hey, yes he said he was at a death's door but the truth of the matter was this the king was suffering from having nothing to do so at least again and again what he used to say who oh, i can't i am not feeling well i am at the death's door means at the door of the death he was going to die now itself in that way he is behaving but the truth of the matter truth means satya nijamsha but the truth of the matter was the king was suffering from having nothing to do there is a sentence in english an idle mind is a devil's workshop when a person is idle when the person's mind it is empty then unnecessary things will roam will wander in his mind a person should be busy everyone should be busy in the life so here also the king he was suffering from having nothing to do actually he doesn't have any work to do even though he is having the work he is not willing to do that work he doesn't want to do that work he was escaping from the work and he was lying on the bed simply telling like that i am at the door of the death savina mane baglali nind bitidhi okay he was being bored to the death. so that he was being bored to death he was being bored to death actually death it has not come he was only searching for the death because his idle mind it has become the devil's workshop like that of course the king would not admit this he groaned and moaned and complained of sharp stabs in every muscle and sticking pains in every bone in his body yes of course the king he would not admit the truth what was the truth king he doesn't have any disease he would not admit this many of the doctors they came and they checked the king and they said you do not have any disease but the king he was not agreeing as yes, of course thief if we call him as a thief he won't admit will he admit if we call them as a thief means Uh, they won't admit in the same way the king he is not admitting the truth that he is fine he is okay he doesn't have any disease what he was telling simply he groaned and moaned so when we are not feeling well what we used to do we groan observe the word groan there 
groan means it's a painful sound when we are not feeling well what we do we groan right we groan and moan groan means it's a uh, what it is a make a make a sad sound usually in usually in pain moan is also it is a uh, uh, what synonym a uh, moan means it's a painful sound so when we are not feeling well we used to groan and moan hmm ha huh. when you are not feeling well when you will be having a fever what you do when there will be a lot of tiredness in our body we feel we groan and moan saying like that hmm ha huh, amma like that so here the king what he was doing he was groaning and moaning and he was complaining again and again he was telling i have a sharp pain in my body the pain it is pricking in my body and the pain i have a pain in each and every muscle so uh, the pain no it has been stuck to my body see here how he is complaining he is complaining of sharp stabs sharp stabs means pricking stabs it is given in your globbery in every muscle and the sticking pain stick means uh, it is uh, what we can say to stick unto okay the pain has been stuck to my bone and i have a pricking pain in every muscle so what he was telling is i have a lot pain i have a lot of pain in my body the pain it has been stuck to my bone and i have a pricking pricking means chuchu anta novu where he was feeling he was feeling the pricking pain in every muscle in his body and physicians and surgeons came from far and wide so to look at the king when a person he is not feeling well he will go to a doctor so in the same way, way after all he was a king he was a majesty he is having a kingdom lot of power wealth right so here physicians and surgeons came from far and wide from every uh, each and every corner from uh, each and every corner of the kingdom many of the surgeons and physicians they came to look the king to uh, what we can say to check the king's health observe the two words there physicians and surgeons there is a difference between both the words both are the doctors physician means they only check you and they prescribe the medicine physician they only check you and they used to prescribe a medicine surgeons means they are the uh, persons they are the doctors who perform surgeries operations okay physicians means they only check the person and they prescribe the medicine surgeons means what they do they perform surgeries they perform the operations they will be called as surgeons in kannada we say shastragnaru so yes right okay so here many of the physicians and surgeons from far and wide they came to the king to check his health they looked down the king's throat they tapped his chest and felt his pulse they hemmed hawed and stroked their beards but they could find nothing wrong see here there is not at all a disease how can they find the disease is that so if a person he, if he is really sleeping we can wake him up if he is not at all sleeping if he is doing a drama we can't wake him up is that so right in the same way here there is not at all a disease the physicians and surgeons they came what they are doing is first they are looking down the king's throat when you go to the doctor for first what they do they look at our tongue and they, they look at our throat and they will feel the pulse pulse means nadi badita okay in the same way here physicians and surgeons they are uh, looking down the king's throat and they tap his chest observe the word there uh, look down look at down is an example for phrasal verb i have told you phrasal verb so very important uh, uh, grammar point it is okay uh, look down a verb uh, look is a verb right 
look there is a verb a verb with a preposition or an adverb a verb with a preposition or an adverb it is called as a phrasal verb okay so here look down who look down here the physicians and surgeons they look down the king's throat throat means this part of the body and what they are doing is they tap his chest tap means uh, they gently uh, touched his chest tap to touch gently or slightly so here uh, they are chucking the king and what they are doing is they look down the king's throat they tap his chest and they felt his pulse how they feel the pulse rate they will look uh, uh, they will hold like this and they will feel the pulse rate okay and uh, they hemmed hard and stroke their beard so what they are doing is they are not finding any disease so that what they are doing is they are hemmed they hemmed and hard look at the both uh, uh, words there hemmed hard when we will hem and haw means when we are indefinite about the thing for example if i ask you a question if you know the answer so suddenly very immediately you will tell the answer when you have confusion when you are indefinite what you will do is you will hem and haw so how will how you will do hmm uh like that we will do no the same thing it is hem and haw that is an uh, uh, idiomatic expression i will write on the board you just take down that hem and haw means to mumble take down hem and haw means to mumble uh, in kannada we say to dil sod okay and uh you can say to pause a lot and avoid saying directly so i have told you when you are indefinite when you don't know when you are confused what you will do you will hem and haw and you will mumble for example my sister hem and haw afterwards she accepted she won my shoes see here hem and haw means mm, uh, like that in the same way here all the physicians and surgeons they are what they are not coming to know what is the disease there because actually there is not at all a disease so that they are mumbling to so those side there and what they are doing hmm ha huh, like that they are doing and they stroke their beards beards means uh, hair on the chin in kannada we say daadi gadda so in english what we say beard okay bearded man in the lesson the three questions you have come to know bearded man so like that they are striking striking means they are uh, moving their hands on their beards how can they how can we say how can we say the truth who are uh, uh, thinking like this all the doctors physicians and surgeons they are thinking and they are moving their hands on their beards like this how we can say the truth what is the truth the truth is the king he doesn't have any disease observe the word stroke there stroke is the past form of the strike strike means to touch gently okay so who striked their uh, stroke their uh, beards here all the doctors they are striking striking their beards like this and they are thinking how we can say the truth but they could find nothing wrong so what they are doing they are checking the king they are feeling the pulse rate they are looking at the king's throat they are tapping his chest they are thinking they are mumbling and finally they did all these things they didn't find nothing wrong in the king physicians and surgeons are dots cried the king aren't they raining plain ordinary doctors in the kingdom say here so when the physicians and surgeons they couldn't find disease in the king king become very angry and they shouted and he shouted who shouted here king he is shouting at all those physicians and surgeons these physicians and surgeons are really dots observe the word dots there dots means 
dolts means stupid persons these are really stupid okay stupid persons so these are stupids these do not know how to treat the patient how to identify the disease these are really, really stupid persons and he now again what he was doing he is asking for the plain ordinary doctors in the kingdom what he asked aren't there any plain ordinary doctors in the kingdom he is asking see observe students they that the question is an example for yes or no question because that question it has begun with helping verb or is a helping verb a question which begins with the helping verb that question will be uh, an example for a yes or no question so here what he is doing he shouted uh, observe the word there cried he is not crying he is shouting in pain he is shouting in pain and he said all these plain uh, sorry uh, physicians and surgeons are really dolts these are stupid persons these do not know how to find the disease how to treat the patient uh, let them to go out and aren't there any plain ordinary doctor so he rajyadalli uh, plain ordinary doctors ilva plain ordinary doctors means one who treats the patient for uh, a common disease so for uh, what we can say cold fever like that very small small disease they will treat the plain ordinary doctors came from hither and yon they felt the king's pulse tapped his chest and looked down his throat they hawed and hem took off their spectacles put them on again but even they could find nothing wrong so here plain ordinary doctors the king asked for plain ordinary doctor and the prime minister the minister what he did he brought all the plain ordinary doctors and they all come from hither and yon observe the word they hither and yon hither and yon means from various directions so from each and every corner of the kingdom from various directions from all the directions okay from each and every corner of the kingdom plain ordinary doctors came to check the king observe the word what it is the plain ordinary doctors came from hither and yon from there from here from all the parts of the kingdom plain ordinary doctors came what they did they also did the same thing what they are doing they looked at the king's throat they felt the pulse rate they tapped his chest they looked down his throat they also what are they doing they hawed and hemmed as i have already told you they hawed and hemmed what they are doing they are mumbling they are posing a lot posing a lot and they are avoiding uh, avoiding their words to tell very directly and one more thing they did what they did they took off their spectacles spectacles means it's a spectacle okay Uh, the plain ordinary doctors they took off their took off means they removed took off observe the word took off they that is also an example for uh, phrasal verb as i have already told you they removed the spectacles and they put them on again and in the movies we have seen if something serious is there or uh, something uh, the matter is there doctor will remove their specs and they put them on again and they continue their speaking in the same way plain ordinary doctors they took off their took off means they removed their spectacles and they put them on again but even they couldn't find nothing wrong in the king so i have told you there is no disease in the king how could they find the disease is it so uh, plain ordinary doctors are idiots cried the king in a rage the next one who examines me and finds nothing wrong will have his ears cut off and his nose shot and observe the anger of the king here when the plain ordinary doctors they didn't find anything wrong in the king they didn't find disease in the king he shouted on them how he shouted on those uh, physicians and surgeons no in the same way he cried in a rage observe the word rage there rage means great anger so very uh, angry great 
and uh, so he was not crying as i have already told you he was not crying he was shouting in pain and he was shouting at all those plain ordinary doctors addressing them as idiots these are all idiots even these people they don't know how to identify the disease how to treat the diseased person how to treat the patient these are really what they are they are idiots and uh, physicians and surgeons are gods they are stupid persons okay and uh, he is telling the next one whoever comes to me the next one whoever comes to me and examines me and tells nothing wrong in me and i will cut his ears and i will shot his nose see how his anger will be if anyone comes to me and examines and tells me that there is no disease i will cut his ears and i will shorten his nose in that way he shouted and he uh, became very angry okay this did not stop the coming of the doctors and the surgeons and the physicians the king kept sending messengers and courtiers to bring them in so because of this because of this this did not stop the coming of the doctors physicians surgeons many doctors physicians and surgeons are coming they are checking the king and they are leaving that place telling like that there is no disease and even they also got the scoldings from the king the same thing it is happening the king what did he do simply lying on the king lying on the bed and sending the messengers and the courtiers to bring the doctors in so observe the two words there messenger messenger means a person who carries a message what do you mean by messenger it is given in your glossary messenger means a person who carries a message courtier means a person who is a part of the king's court asthanikaru in kannada we say okay courtier courtier means a person who is a part of the king's court in the glossary both the words are given messenger means a person who carries a message courtier means a person who is a part of the king's court okay so what happened the king simply lying on the bed and sending uh, messengers and uh, courtiers to bring the doctors in the people were in despair such an epidemic of heads without ears and faces with short and noses was never seen so all the subjects in the kingdom whose kingdom the king's kingdom all the subjects they were in despair despair means they have lost the hope what they have lost they have lost the hope that king will recover and they he will uh, rule us he will make us to be happy so what they have done all the subjects in that kingdom they were in despair subjects means prajagal all the people in that kingdom they have lost the hope this king will recover and he will rule us in a good manner they have lost the hope such an epidemic of heads without ears and faces with short and noses was never seen so such an epidemic epidemic means large number okay so king has told if anyone Uh, comes and tells that i don't have disease i will cut his ears and i will shorten his nose such an epidemic of heads were never was never seen so king has told that but he has not done that work finally a simple old man came to see the king the exhausted prime minister brought her into the royal bed chamber so finally who came to the king a simple old man so i have told you a uh, simple observe the word here simple old woman so here woman is a noun it's a common noun right so simple and old are the adjectives simple old woman adjective means it is an verb it is a word which describes noun and pronoun woman is old old is also an adjective woman is simple 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 is also an adjective so finally who comes to the king a simple old man comes to the king and the exhausted who is exhausted here prime minister prime minister he is exhausted exhausted means tired exhausted means
exhausted tired who is tired here that prime minister is tired because bringing all the doctors into the royal bed chamber of the king and what taking them away from that place the same work he is doing and the prime minister is tired doing all these work and the prime minister he brought that woman into the royal bed chamber you all know royal means very luxurious how the king's uh, bed chamber it is it is very loyal royal royal means very luxurious who brought here the prime minister he is tired he brought that old man into the king's uh, chamber the simple old man peered into the king's face for a long time then she said your majesty you are suffering from a strange and rare disease so rare and strange that no name exists for it so the simple old man she is very wise very very intelligent and smart wise intelligent smart these three are the examples for adjectives okay so simple old man she is very wise and she peered into the king's face observe the word peer the peer means to look closely she is observing him observing him very closely so she is she peered she looked close into the king's face and she comes to know that the disease and she says then she said your majesty see majesty means it is a title used when we are speaking to a king and queen right majesty actually majesty means very powerful having a lot of uh, uh, wealth and all those things majesty very powerful majesty it is a title used when we are speaking to a king and queen okay your majesty you are suffering from a strange and rare disease see she is naming the disease actually she doesn't know the name of the disease so that she is telling like that very strange disease and very rare disease strange means unknown disease because she only she doesn't know what is the disease rare aparupa rare means aparupa vada kaile thumba kadame janaki kaile barutte okay strange and rare disease so rare and strange it is that no name exists for it so it is very strange and it is very rare only few people get this disease and that disease no it doesn't have any name as i have already told you she only she doesn't know the name of the disease so that very wisely she is answering that foolish king like that you are suffering from that disease and that disease is this very strange strange means uh, uh, it is very unusual it is not at all usual it is very unusual and it is very very rare only few people will get this disease and that disease it doesn't have any name then i knew it cried the king in glee i kept telling all of them the fools that i am a sick man so here the king becomes very very happy because he got a single person who is accepting that really he is having a disease so here so that he is telling there i knew it he cried he cried in glee glee means happy so who is happy here who is uh, happy or king is happy because he got a single person who is agreeing that he is having a disease so he cried cried means i have told you he is not crying he is shouting in pain and he said i kept telling all of these people fools that i am a sick man see observe the sentence there you have to underline the sentences which come within the double inverted commas those will come to you as extracts as i have already told you in the previous classes so here he is telling i kept telling all of them fools i am really sick man actually they only didn't believe me like that in that way he is telling these people no these people didn't believe me fools i used to tell them i kept telling all of them fools i am a sick man they didn't believe like that he is telling a very sick man said the old man the king leaned back among his silken pillows and closed his eyes and he wrinkled his brow as if he were in pain so she is adding some what spice to his words who is adding spice here masale so what she is doing she is adding some water some more spice to his wordings not only sick man a very sick man 
so uh, you actually are not only a sick man very very sick man you are then the king again he is doing drama he leaned back lean means to go back lean means to get back he leaned back among his silken pillow pillow means you know that pillow it is made up of silk okay and what he is doing he is closing his eyes and he is wrinkling his eyebrow that he was feeling a lot of pain wrinkle means uh, wrinkle pants you say wrinkle mm, what you what you can say it's a sukku uh, in kannada we say sukku gattadu okay wrinkle so here when that old man said a very sick man the king what he is doing he is making drama that he was feeling a lot of pain what he was doing he is leaning back lean back means to get back to go you know uh, to go backwards he leaned back among his silken pillows and what he did he closed his eyes and he is wrinkling his bro bro means eyebrow he is wrinkling his bro like this and he was pretending like that he was feeling really a great pain okay and is there no cure for me he said and he asked question and is there no cure for me observe the sentence children that sentence that question is an example for of yes or no question is there no cure for me there the word cure it is used as a noun and cure means medicine there in that sentence in the beginning i have told cure it acts both as noun and verb here the king he is asking a question that is there no cure for me is there no medicine for me you have told i have a disease i have a strange and rare disease i am a very sick man and is there no cure for me is there no medicine for me he is asking oh yes your majesty you need sleep but one night in the shirt of a happy man and you will be cured instantly said the simple old man observe the word instantly there instantly means immediately so here he she is prescribing a medicine who is prescribing a medicine here the simple old man she is prescribing a medicine for that foolish king's disease what she prescribed when she was asked by the king is there no cure is there no medicine for my disease then she told oh yes your majesty you have a cure you have a medicine for that disease it's very simple only what you have to do you have to sleep how you have to sleep you have to sleep one night only one night in the shirt in the shirt of a happy man so here the simple old man suggested the king what is the cure suggested by the simple old man the king has to sleep one night how he has to sleep wearing the shirt whose shirt shirt of a happy man okay so this is what about the lesson today uh, the rest of the lesson we will continue in the next class i thought you have come to know about today's class let's meet in the next session okay thank you